Hello everyone, it's Helen from Journaling Planet and today I'm going to show you how I made these uh, this super cute uh, specimen card using a tea bag instead of acetate. Uh, now obviously a lot of us can find plastic very easily uh, around our house. Uh, sometimes we can just use very thin polythene bags. Um, sometimes we can use the acetate that comes out of uh, food packaging. But if for any reason you are unable to um, find any acetate or plastic or just say you um, fancy a change of aesthetic, you can use tea bags in place of the acetate. It's not quite as see-through. You can see my fingers through there, but not, not as clear as you would do if it was acetate. But it just creates a rather interesting different effect. So I thought I would have a go at making two of these. Um, it's a journaling spot on the back as well, so there's space to write. Um, I thought I'd make two because I thought I'd try one with a used tea bag. I don't actually drink tea. <laughs> I only have tea bags in for guests that come and for using for tea dyeing. So I don't actually um, drink it myself, which is um, a source of great pain to my family because they're from Yorkshire. And so tea drinking is kind of a ritual tradition. So let's get started uh, with making this and I'll show you step by step how I did it. You may actually find some easier ways of doing it but I'll just show you what I did. So I started off with some cereal box and I cut it um, down. I didn't measure this one but uh, when I was making it but it ended up being about two and three quarter inches across. It can be any size that you want up upwards vertically um, to fit in your journal. With these ones I thought I would give myself a bit of wriggle room and I would create three inch um, three inches across. The width is the most important thing. The reason being is that you need something big enough for a two inch uh, punch which is what I'm going to be using and um, you need something that is going to be able to fit in there. And then you can trim it down. If it's not quite central, you can trim it down later. But let's get started with this first step. So the first step is I'm going to use two of these. Um, one of which I want to keep blank for the back to write on. And one of which I'm going to decorate to be the front. I need to decorate the front before I punch any holes. So there are many different ways that you could decorate the front. I'm going to go with some washi tape. And you don't need a washi tape thick enough to cover the whole thing. You could do strips of washi tape. I've seen lots of tutorials um, where strips of washi tape are used to cover card and make things like bookmarks. Um, the paper outpost tutorial on that comes to mind. So it is possible to, you know, do all these things with washi tape. But in this instance, I'm just using one that's actually thick enough to cover the whole thing. Although it, it is one of those with a backing and anyone who watches this channel regularly knows that I don't like washi tapes with a backing because I'm doing this for environmental purposes in part, this hobby. And now I've got to think a way of upcycling the backing <laughs> so that I haven't got any leftovers. So that's that covered. I'm just going to trim across the top. I'm going to just do some fine tuning, wrap it around the edges. I'll speed this bit up just to keep things flowing nicely. Okay, that's super cute, very easy to make. And now I'm going to attempt to punch through both of these um, pieces of card at once. I'm not really convinced my punch is gonna be up to it, but I'll give it a go. If not, I can punch them individually and I'll show you how I did that. If you use thin card, you, don't, you just make this very easy on yourself. <laughs> very, very easy on yourself indeed if you just use thin card. Otherwise, you have to pray that your punch will go through both pieces of paper. And at present, oh gosh, <laughs> punching is not supposed to be this difficult. I'm quite concerned I might break the punch if I continue with down this track. So I'm going to have to hope that that's scored it enough. It has, look, um, and come in again and go back to where I was. So that's the way I would deal with it. If you can't punch both, I would press it hard enough to score it. 
and then come back to where the marks are and then you'll make sure that you you punch it in exactly the same place as you were punching before so in this case there's a little mark on the card which i'm sure you can see and i just make need to make sure that i line my circle up with that mark so that it you know pretty much lines up again some trimming can take place if i didn't quite make it like say so for example there is a little bit now of orange at the bottom that's visible and I can just trim around that just get rid of the excess there just trim around that the most important thing is that the hole lines up okay that's the most important thing so we'll just trim those off a little bit and what I've taken to doing is if I'm not happy with the edge on projects like this come in with a bit of sandpaper and just take the edge off the, the longer piece because what happens if I keep going in with the scissors is I just keep um, putting it in a way that I'm not happy with and then I lose a big chunk of the card. So I'm just taking the edge off. And what it also means is if you ink along here at any point, it will also grab the ink really well. And I can take a bit of the, the colour off as well. So this is what I've taken to doing with projects like this. And I just find it just makes the whole thing look a lot smarter. You see, I've got an issue with the other edge as well. Um, it's nothing to worry about. It's very easy to fix. You can just trim with your scissors like that. If you're satisfied with that, I like to then come in again with a bit of sanding. And then again, if I do any inking, it'll just really grab that edge and it'll cover up the bulk of the co colour if, there if there's any colour showing. So that i'm sure that there'll be some sanding to do on the back as well you can see mm -hmm. you can see that it's just not quite lined up so i'm making quite a meal out of this process it's actually not that difficult and not that uh hard to do but it just shows you if, if you get the same thing with edges if things haven't quite trimmed neatly as you'd like then it's very easy to fix these things just come in and do a bit of trimming, bit of sanding, jobs are good and then we're away, away we go. So that's that. The main thing is I think that it doesn't show on the front. Okay. So once you've got things there and I might just do some more sanding the edges down later and trimming things as I want them to be trimmed once I've got everything in place. I then need to bring in a tea bag and for this one I'm actually going to use a used tea bag. The first one, the example one I did you can see is a unused tea bag. Okay, so I don't know how this is going to look. I I haven't tried this way yet, so well, let's just see. Keep all my old tea dyeing tea bags just in a plastic bag, Ziploc bag. And what I need to do is I need to find a piece big enough to stretch over here. See, that is big enough but there'll be a crease in it so I'm going to do that okay it's going to be interesting how this looks because this is quite a dark I wonder if I've got a light slightly lighter <laughs> now I'm being fussy over which tea bag I think this will work better slightly lighter design I think it'll just show up the ink better I have no idea if this is true I just it's just what I imagine <laughs> <laughs> so let's give it a go. Let's see whether or not it does. So I'm just going to trim um, the piece of tea bag roughly to size, um, just so it covers that. And then I'm going to aim to do a stamp right in the middle. Okay. And I'm going to just use black ink in this case, standard black office ink. And I'm going to get my butterfly stamp which is still sitting on top of the ink pad top which I find very useful for inking with because they, they do a nice rocking motion like this you see you can get all inked up okay and then I'm just going to go in I'm going to lay it over as I ink it up because otherwise I might miss the center so I'm just going to lay it over where I imagine to glue it okay do a nice rocking motion there and get a nice impression. That's not half bad. I think I prefer the unused, but that's not half bad as an impression. 
And in fact, if you turn it over, it looks even cooler, I think, when you turn it that way around. So you sort of see the back of the image. Okay, let's um, glue this down, for which I just used a bit of glue stick. And I just went around the edge like this. Very complicated procedure, you see. Um, just around the edge of the hole like that. And I just placed this down. I'm going to place it that way. As I said, I think that just looks better. And if I need to trim anywhere on the tea bag afterwards, I can do that. Get it as taut as you can. So it sort of emulates plastic, but just be careful not to tear the tea bag. That's what we're trying to avoid. It's quite delicate material. Okay, that's down. That's down. I think there's just a little bit at the end here that I'll trim off. Just where it's sticking up. And also I don't want any barriers between um, one frame of this and the other. I want it to lie as flat as possible. Okay. That's an interesting experiment. I don't think it looks bad. But it's not as transparent. I mean, you can, you can still see through it. I don't know. Maybe it's got an interesting, unique vintage flair to it. Shall we say that? So I'm going to just um, glue down. I think I'm going to use wet glue for this, actually. Um, because it can be a bit funny. Um, I'm just going to glue a lot around um, there and there. Not too close to the um, to the window. In fact, that's far too much glue. What am I talking? What am I even thinking? Look at the state of that glue, absolutely everywhere. Let me just mop a little bit of that up, just just a little bit, using my trusty old tea towel. And just smush it around a little bit so it doesn't ooze absolutely everywhere. This clear PVA that I bought. It's great. It comes out wonderfully, unlike many other glues that I've bought, but it comes out a bit too wonderfully. And then I end up with it absolutely everywhere, as you've just seen. So maybe I'll just smush that around a bit. Technical term, smushing. And then I'm just going to press that down. It's really cool when you can make things out of, um, you know, cereal box and stuff. Nobody would ever guess, would they, that this was a piece of cereal box. There's a bit showing at the top, um, but we'd sand that off after the glue set. So I'm just going to let that adhere. I'm going to put a paperweight on it and I'm going to sit it to one side whilst I make another one. And I know that one side is, um, you know, closer to the edge. The hole is close to the edge and the other. It's okay. I'm going to trim up here. Um, so that's fine. Uh, we'll just let that glue for now and we'll just set a paperweight on that and just leave it to one side. Okay. And then whilst that's going on, we'll take a second. These are also useful shapes. You can cover these over and make embellishments. And on the front, you've already got an embellishment. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That'll go in my scrapbooks box. Um, so we take two more sides of cereal box. I'm going to just repeat the process. And now I know that there is no way, <laughs> absolutely no way that this um, punch is going through the card. So I'm going to make take that into consideration when I do the, the initial scoring of that. So just to show you that you can use absolutely anything to cover these, I'm going to use some um, wallpaper just a scrap that I've got left I'd really like to use it up um, so let's glue that down I'm going to use um, I'm, dare I I'm going to use some wet glue again I'll try and put a little bit less down than I did uh, <laughs> on the specimen card oh dear that really was an old mess wasn't it um, I get very trigger happy with my glue sometimes and then there are real consequences to that so we'll just let that Smush out to the sides and hopefully that will glue down and then um, I might add a bit more glue stick if it's not if it's not feeling it. So we'll just give that a second to set and I'll just come in with uh, my old tea towel again and <laughs> just clean up the surrounding areas. Okay, but you can use scrapbook paper of course you can I just happen to use I have this lying around 
and I just thought it looked pretty and I thought that will be a nice thing to use. So you can really adapt this to any materials that you have. You can cover a piece of card with anything really. Fabric, could go for fabric, see how that pans out. I did add a bit of lace to the edges of this one. It looks cute, but I did that because it fit the motif of the paper. I didn't do it just because I felt like that was something that a, a specimen card needed. It just fit the particular motif that I was doing. This one may also um, fit with lace, but I'm not sure have to wait and see. Right, so let me just score this because I know it's not going to go through. Just hope I don't break my punch in the process of scoring it. Okay, hopefully that made a mark on both pieces of card. Just, uh, just, just a tiny little bit, but just enough for me to see. Bye. So let's get this lined up as best we can. If I don't get it perfect, trimming can be done. So that looks just about there. Oh, come on. It's only one piece of card and a bit of wallpaper. Come on. You can do it. Thank you. Just a bit of gentle encouragement can sometimes help your stamps. <laughs> your um, your punches, I mean. Right, this is the more difficult one to get lined up, but I can just see where, where it was. I made the impression. Okay. Um, that went through much easier, so I'm assuming the wallpaper was the reason that was resistant. So there's a little note for you that wallpaper is much more resistant. This is lining up a lot better. So just for you to know, it won't always smush up the way it did in this one. For some reason, this one just wasn't very well aligned. You're going to have good ones that you make, not so great ones that you make. That's just the way it goes. And then you'll have to, you know, line it up and uh, see if you can trim it off. If you really properly align this, there's still some trimming you'd need to do at the top and bottom. So, you know, it's just a bit of a process, really. You just have to get the, when you can't go through two layers, you have to try and get them as aligned as you can and then do some trimming. If you can go through both layers at the same time, you will not have this problem. I just chose something that was quite thick. You could just use craft card and you'd be spared all this trauma. Okay, I would like to do something a little bit different with this one. Um, I'm going to use an unused uh, tea bag. So, something that is very similar to the first tea bag that I used, but this time, and I'm going to stick with my butterfly stamp because um, it's the mo most likely motif on a specimen card. But you could, I mean, you could put anything on there. You could put a bumblebee. I've got a bumblebee stamp I could have put on here. I just I haven't got it to hand right now. You could have put on a, I'm just cleaning off my ink stamp while I talk to you. Um, you could have put a dragonfly, you could have put a flower, you could have used stickers. You don't have to, particularly with the with the unused tea bag, the like washy stickers would barely even show up. So what I'm going to do different this time, and I've no idea how this is going to pan out, but... I'm going to use archival ink, which is waterproof, and I'm going to try and paint the butterfly in a particular colour, just a little bit of, of um, watercolour on it and see what happens. It could be a complete disaster, um, but you know, like, you don't know these things until you try, do you? So you just got to give it a go. So here's what I'm stamping, and again, I'm lining it over the hole as I'm doing my stamping to make sure I get it near the centre of the hole. Maybe you have an, a better way of doing it than that. I don't really. So um, the first job is just to get it vaguely centre. Okay. Bit of rocking from side to side to get the good imprint. Right. That is archival ink. So I'm very much hoping that this won't run when I paint it. I'm just going to give it a moment to set. And whilst that's happening, I'm going to just put together the colours I'm going to use. A little bit of orange and a little bit of blue. I've got these Arteza watercolour felt pens, real brush pens. They're okay. I mean, I, I don't think I would particularly go overboard um, in excitement about them, but they are. They work perfectly well. Oh, that's stuck to the 
<laughs> Tip number one, do not stamp over a glued area because your artwork will then become stuck <laughs> to, the, to the table. Not good. So I need, I'm going to need some blue. So one of the things that I'm going to do is just get my paintbrush with some water. Okay, and then I'm going to just make some blue up here. Okay. At some point I will probably get some um, watercolour paints that are not pens. I do have some pencils as well. Now if I wanted to I could, the nice thing about these brush pens is I could just actually brush the colour into the design like this. And that's the nice thing about them. They are extremely precise. And I think there's something really wonderful about that. I could use a paintbrush if I wanted, or I could just do this. And I'm just going to do a few different bits and pieces like this. Okay, that's the orange. Um, Maybe I'll do the body orange as well, just so it stands out. There we go. And then you can already see that looks really cute. I'm going to take my blue pen, dip it in the bit of water that I've sort of used to activate it, and then just dab the parts of it. Oh, this is looking really cool. This is looking really cool. Um, let's just see. Which bits haven't been coloured in orange? That's so cute. I really am pleased with how that's come out. Those Arteza pens were perfect for that. I generally am not raving about them, but I did think for that particular task, very cool. Okay, let's get this glued down with a bit of glue stick. Careful not to tear our lovely design. It looks so pretty. Um, where's my glue stick? Right, just a little bit of glue stick around the hole. Remember, we're not gluing the tea bag, we're gluing around the hole. The card is more durable. If you start messing around with glue stick on a tea bag, it probably will be fine, but the odds of tearing are much higher. Should we put it that way? So better to risk it this way, okay. Because I've got this lovely painted design, I'm going to make sure that I place it face up this time. All right, oh wow, it looks lovely. When I get that glued down, that's how it's going to look. Really pretty. So let's get that glued down. I'll just move my ink out of the way. That was, I think, a success, what counts as a successful experiment. Um, just wondering if I should just use glue stick. I think I'm going to. Um, I just got the wet glue all over before and I just, it's just not worth the risk, is it? I clearly can't be trusted with wet glue. I go too crazy. I get too excited. Bad things happen. Yeah, we'll just, we'll leave it as is, shall we? We'll just go with glue stick. Okay, I know what you will not do when you're gluing this down is get your grimy, inky, gluey hands over the lovely wallpaper that you glued down. You would never do that. You would be too smart and you would keep your hands much cleaner. So um, this tip is just for those people like me who, um, you know, should have washed their hands a little bit quicker. So I'm going to put some stickers <laughs> over my grimy hand marks to cover up the fact that I, you know, sh don't wash my hands when I'm crafting as much as I should. Okay, so I'm just going to do that now. 
Then we'll add the finishing touches to these, including trimming down. I need to be careful when I, where I put this actually, because um, I'll probably need to trim a significant chunk off this edge. So maybe some of the grime will be taken with it. Here's hoping. I'll think I'll trim those first before I put those on because that would be not a good move, would it? So I'll just go to the trimmer, trim down this edge so that as you can see at present, there's less space here than there is here. So I'm just going to trim it down and try and align that better. Okay, so they've both been trimmed down. I've fixed my grubby finger marks on this one. Um, my trimmer did not particularly enjoy the, the wallpaper. And as a result, I feel like some lace will be going around the edges of this one um, to hide the awful job the trimmer did at one end of it, this end. Um, and I also might put the tab, instead of putting the tab at the top, put it on the side to cover that up. I feel like so much of my videos are about covering up things that I've done not quite right. But that's okay. You know, that's part of the craft, isn't it? So I'm going to get on with... Uh, probably adding a bit of lace to this. I'm not going to add lace to this. I don't think it's appropriate. I will possibly ink around the edges um, using a bit of distress ink just to sort of get rid of the white edges. That's like my main, my main focus right now. I think I'm going to go with this lace, but I think maybe I'm going to just going to do it at the top and the bottom and then add the tab on the, the side here. I don't like to go too overboard with lace. Um, it can, for me, sort of swamp a project if you're not careful. So when I apply it, I usually only use tiny little bits of it. Um, I know some people really like a lot of lace. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not to my tastes. So I didn't use fabric glue this time. I used just my clear PVA and I'm just hoping it will just grab it. Seems to be working just fine. I'll just cut that off there. Sometimes I find that my fabric glue isn't that brilliant on lace. So occasionally I will just use my PVA with lace. With fabric, definitely fabric glue is the way to go. But for some reason with lace, it just sometimes does not work as I want it to. It might just be the fabric glue that I've got. It probably isn't very strong. That makes a difference to it. So where is it? Just pop that here. It just gives it a bit of a nice border at the top. And then I'll put the tab along the side. And I will show you the tabs that I've made for this. If you want to see how you make the tabs, very, very simply with a circle punch. I've got a video on that that I'll link to below. It's the last video that I put out. And I will just um, link to that below so you can see it. It's just um, a video where I get to basically play with my scraps. So if you're looking for a way to get rid of your scraps, I do recommend sitting and making punches. I had a whale of a time doing it. A very, very fun way to use up your scraps and pass a bit of time. Oh, I'm really loving how that looks. Very much so. That was the perfect lace for that project. And now I'll just grab the tabs. Okay, here's the first tab. I've just put a bit of glue on it. And I'm just going to push it into this corner here and just press it down. I inked around the tab before I pressed it down. And that's that. Could probably do with some ink around the edges. I'm not sure how well this washi is going to pick it up. Uh, maybe just put a little bit of uh, water on my ink pad there. I'm just drying out a little bit. So, oh, not too bad actually. I, because I've done the sanding at the edges, it's probably picking it up a little bit better than it might ordinarily. Giving it a nice edge there. Just got to be careful when I'm doing this not to put my finger straight through <laughs> the tea bag because that's just classic me. That's the kind of thing that I could just do. Um, these are still not quite dry yet, so they're a little bit um, bendy. But when they're dry, um, you know, they will look really great. So there we go. I mean, that's pretty much it done dusted because you don't need to sew around them. Once they're glued, they're glued. 
And I do, I really like this effect. It's it's kind of interesting. I didn't like it very much when I first looked at it, not as much as the other one, but there is something about the used tea bag. I don't know, something interesting about it. So that's that one. It's all exper experimentation, folks. I, I never quite know how something is going to turn out. For the second one, I just um, created the tab out of a different type of um, paper, a uh, kind of wallpaper, and then I just wrote on it. I didn't have a stamp that was going to show up on that, so I just wrote um, specimen number 67872, which is a totally made-up number and doesn't mean anything, apart from it may mean something to somebody, who knows? <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything to me, I just wrote it um, randomly, just for fun. Just for fun, that's what it means for me, it means fun. All right, just going to put some glue on this, get it glued down. These have actually come out so much better than I was expecting. Um, I didn't know when I tried these two things whether or not they were going to work with the used tea bag and the painting, but it's worked out well. Okay, and this will just hopefully disguise a little bit the fact that my trimmer hated the wallpaper. There we go. Right, this all needs to dry. I am not really convinced that I'm going to do any sewing. I, I've, I've sort of thought about it and I just think that my machine gets put through enough without me doing that as well. And frankly, I don't really think that it's necessary um, given how pretty they look anyway. So well, this was my prototype. This was just a uh, unused plain tea bag with some normal black ink on it. I happen to have this Discoveries ink stamp I didn't even know I had it until I started rooting around in my ink stamp folder. And I was like, that will do nicely. And uh, just a bit of lace glued around the edge and some journaling spot space on the back. It was um, scrapbook paper that I put over the top. So you can use scrapbook paper, works perfectly fine. I've used, um, well, this was actually a baked beans packaging card. Um, and the rest I've used cereal box, as you saw. I really like the way this one's turned out. It looks so vintage, doesn't it? Um, this one was washi tape. I used tea bag and just normal black ink. The integrity of the stamp is not brilliant, but I think that adds to the vintage faded style. So I think it works really well. And a bit of sanding on the edge, edges so that the um, ink clung to it. And then a tab added at the top. And then finally, um, wallpaper. Unused tea bag with archival ink and watercolour. And then some stickers to go over my mistakes. And then some lace at either end and a tab at the side that I just wrote on. It's always also made out of wallpaper. In both cases, there are more, there's more space to uh, write on the back, although as you can see, it's full of glue. <laughs> so I might need to think about covering the back up if I'm gonna put that on show. Maybe I'm not going to, maybe these are just going to get glued into a journal, I don't know. I will cross that bridge when I come to it. For now, I think uh, these work. These look pretty good as they are. Hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it and uh, just having a play and experimenting with tea bags. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.